Hello, my name is Leonor Rodriguez. I am a professor of Technical University of Madrid and today I will be introducing a little bit uh, the elements for a drip irrigation system, what do you need to know, when designing drip irrigation system in an ecological orchard, organic orchard. The orchards that we be on belongs to the Technical University of Madrid and the Faculty of uh, Engineering, Agricultural Engineering School. And we will see here the different elements that the systems need to be aware of their characteristics and their functionality. First thing you need to think of is about where the water is, how the water will be conveying to the different small orchards and if we are talking about drip irrigation systems you need to know that the water will move along the circular pipe as this one and the whole section will be filling with water that means that pressure along the pipe will be higher than atmospheric pressure. Now when we move on to see where the water comes out in this particular orchard. Water comes to this point from the Central Water uh, Company of Madrid. It's called Canal Isabel II. It's located in a special uh, places. Afterwards, there is buried underneath the soil, the different pipe, and it comes out in this point. You will see here, this is a Hydraulic valve, this, this one over here, this is open or closed valve that goes forward to connect another pipe but of different material. This one is fibrocemento and the other one is polyethylene. The diameter of this material is 40 millimeters. And it comes along to the whole length of the field showing the pressure at this point but in this case it is connected with a pressure regulator what do we need a pressure regulator here the pressure of this pipe could be as high as 70 uh, water meter cone so that is too high for a uh, irrigation system so in that case is we need a very high pressure, more than 20 or 30 uh, water meters column, we will need to use that uh, pressure regulator device in the point where the distribution pi ends. Afterwards, we'll continue to the head or the tail of the different areas from the small Drip irrigation system on this horticultural orchards, and that pipe will be the same diameter and the same material as this one you see over here. This is also buried. Let's move to see which are the typical elements for a drip irrigation system. But first of all, let me remind it how much water you need to apply bad irrigation system. How to calculate the water requirements for each plant in different orchards. It will depend on variables such as climate, precipitation, solar radiation, wind, soil, structure, texture, organic matter, and the physiological behavior of each crop. There are public programs to calculate this crop water requirements such as the crop water by fowl that everyone can take link into those uh, specific wet, download the program and calculate the water requirements for each crop and, and each location. We know that information. What should we do? What should we do next? Next is decide which type of irrigation system we need. For our organic orchard like that, we need a very efficient 
irrigation systems. If we think of the various types of irrigation methods, well, we think of the surface irrigation method is really too complicated nowadays. You can do it. We can think of the sprinkler irrigation method, but uh, for that horticultural crop, it's not worth it since we have uh, many uh, evaporation losses and we also need a very high pressure. So, the best irrigation method should be drip irrigation methods. Drip irrigation methods it also has the advantage doesn't be affected by wind. So in the specific locations where the wind is could be a problem, that's the, 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 the method to go. And the efficiencies are really, very, very high. Is the, the management of the system is well organized. So what are the typical elements for a drip irrigation system? They are the drippers. These are different types of drippers. That's the online emitter meter and they have the advantage in case you will need several discharges you can't do it with this small tube we have an intra line emitters means that the path is cut at both ends and inserted within the emitters and the most Typical models are the integrated model like that. All of them have in common a labyrinthic structure, as you can see here. You will see that it's a labyrinth with um, protusions and different angles. What does this, this require for? As we think of the drip irrigation system is a localizing system that means water discharge drop by drop near the plant and the pipe has a pressure over the atmospheric pressure that means over one bars we need an element to loss to drop off all pressure that means to keep it close to atmospheric pressure. What are these elements usually? The labyrinths. So the water comes into this labyrinth, moves along, and then the discharge from the different outlets, usually one or two outlets. And when it is discharged, this is atmospheric pressure. So that means that water uh, comes like it, it, it were a drop. You can also try at home, if you have a pile like this, by pressure, try to punch it, a small hole. You will see that there is a jet, free jet coming out. Doesn't mean that uh, even though you have the same diameter outlet from the meters, this, uh, the meters and the one in the pipe, you won't see the same effect. This is a localized because the labyrinth and this is not localized, this is a typical fluid light. We'll observe that uh, you have a really tiny section, no more than two millimeters, between one and two millimeters depth. So this is one of the disadvantages of this system. You have to be aware that water uh, doesn't carry a small minerals with this so a small organic matter that can plug those sections that means that uh, a, a meter will be plugged and the discharge will be lower than expected in order to avoid that disadvantage you have to add to the system a filter the most typical system for drip irrigation system is the Dix filters. This is a very fine dish pressed together, water comes from the outer part and the, all the material that is conveying with the water stay in the greenest part of the, of the dish and the clean water comes 
to the inner part and move to the irrigation units. Well, we know the elements, and now a question to answer is, what should be the optimum discharge for the meter? Well, you can have in the market from one liter per hour till eight or 10 liters per hour. So this is a, a, a wide interval range. What you say? When we are dealing with pressure, don't forget to leave a pressure gauge like that at the beginning of the irrigation unit. That's the typical. If this is leave it and you can go there and so it's time what the, the pressure is. Otherwise, if you don't want to do that, yes, uh, leave a pressure button over there and go with a digital manometer like this this time you want and going with this element that is this connected to the digital manometer, punch it into the bottom outlet and measure the pressure. Finally, we need a volume meter like that. That's the Wolfman volume meter. It can be used for programming the irrigation or just simple to pay the bill of water that will can allow everyone on two months. For this irrigation system, we have chosen an integrated model not compensating 2.2 liters per hour. And this is the uh, design of the meter that goes inside the pipe. Now let's move to the orchard and see how the irrigation unit is. As you remember, this was the point with the pressure regulator and the pressure guard to know which is the regulator, the pressure at this time and, uh, and, and at, at every moment. Remember, this system has a pressure over 40 water column meter, even 60 water column meter, because it comes to the general water networking from the city of Madrid. You wouldn't have this pressure, uh, that's probably you may have in, in, in a field located at the summers of the big cities, you probably will have to install a little pan at the uh, mm, beginning of the whole system. In this case, we don't need it. We, we need the contrary. We need to, to drop up some uh, energy because the, the, the pressure is really high. And then uh, we we'll just we'll keep it there, let's say between one and two bars. We move with the same diameter, polyethylene pipe, for millimeters and we need to think of the best design for this chart and this orchards first you have to make all the little settles for the plants that's the first thing you need to be decided once this is done the irrigation system needs to cover all the water cross water requirements for that needs what should be the best design for this specific case? We have tried and calculated different options. Um, the best we found in terms of energy savings is the one that takes the same pipe for water distribution all along to the middle area between this small plot and the left and right plot that goes along in the middle to the middle point of the field. And from here it is split with two teeth on two different containers. It's containers 
will irrigate four different plots. So we have one container irrigating these four plots. Behind this other container will irrigate this other four plots. Symmetry, just think of it in the big solution, taking into account symmetry as much as possible according to the topography of the field. And these last two, the, the, the lateral will move the final point will be this one here, and there is a coat, uh, elbows that moves one to the le left, one to the right. And from here, they will distribute water from these four blocks and behind from the other four blocks. So, once we have the 5 to 40 millimeters by here, we need to change diameters usually. For the tertiary pipe, this is this one, 25 millimeters. And from the tertiary pipe, we have one tertiary pipe that goes very close to the blocks. We'll move to the end of the plot, down end of the plot, and in the middle part we rise a little bit with a different diameter polyethylene pipe. This is usually from 12 millimeters to 16, and we have an open and closed valve to open and close the water. So, each container will eat water for every four plots. But you have to be aware that water comes from the start point. That means that you have unlimited water. So, in order to make a right programming, to irrigate simultaneously one, two, three or four plots or even more, you won't have to surpass the quantity of water delivered by the start point. You can irrigate simultaneously with as many units as water supplies. We see here in the container two different elements that um, may be very useful for these types of irrigation. One is the electro valve for irrigation programming. This type of programming is by time. You say that the time of irrigation, this is the open valve over here, this uh, valve open and the irrigation will go on to the different subunits. And we have also in that case this element, this is a uh, pressure reductor. We said that at the beginning it was a regulator pressure that was uh, set up to 2.2 bars. And this one reduce the pressure at that point to 1.1. So that means that water that comes along this tertiary pipe will have no more than 1.2 bars. The other element beyond the electro bath and the pressure reductors is the volumeter meter. So it will lock all the volume of water used in each irrigation. Afterwards we move along we have the open and closed valve we saw and this is our small irrigation tube. It 
this compound of the tertiary five and four laterals. In that case, the distribution of water is in the middle. We could have chosen other design taking the distribution of water either in one side or the other. What is with the advantage of distributing the water that way? It means that the pressure is more compensated in both ends. So we have the laterals. The laterals goes from one end to the downstream. The emitter spices are chosen according to the crop physiological requirements, the crop planting. In this case, it's three centimeters apart. For a typical distribution unit, at the end of its lateral, we have a plaque to stop the water running, but in that case, we have a no branched design. That means that the end of the laterals are connected to another uh, tertiary part. That means that water moving from the upper stream going to the downstream will move downwards and can go to reverse. We'll obtain with this type of design that the pressure variability is not as high as so that would mean that we have a more water distribution uniformity and more efficiency. So, finally, we don't need to forget what is the pressure at each irrigation unit. So that means that we need a point where we should read the pressure. It, uh, in that case, we are using the pressure button and will be located in a uniform pipe. That case. How can we do that? To use the puncher. Is that here we can buy the puncher in its small store, for gardening store, a supermarket, and we open a hole, we insert it, and this is a measure meter. The volume meter is also a meter, so don't forget for every meter located in a uniform pipe. Otherwise, the reading you will be taking will be out of range. You never know if this, this will be lower or higher than this would be. I hope you can enjoy this brief explanation and probably you can try doing yourself in your backyard. Thank you for listening.